family. God bless you. And welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. I'm Minister Denise, and I just want to take a moment to thank our pastors for the honor and the privilege to bring this word tonight. I want to open us up in prayer first. So, Father God, we bless you and we thank you, my Lord, for this time, Lord Jesus. We are here, Father God, looking for a word from you, a word to hold us, my Lord. We're here, Father God, our ears are open and we are ready to receive from you. So, Lord Jesus, I ask that there be no interruptions, no hiccups, Lord Father, nothing, Lord Father, to distract us from what you have for us. We bless you, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Oh, man, it is such an honor to be up here tonight. Um, when I was offered the opportunity to come and bring tonight's word, I instantly heard God say, this war is bigger than your tidbit faith. And when I heard him say that, immediately it brought into remembrance a few weeks ago when pastor had preached and he had said, you can't base your foundation on my revelation. And I really had to sit back and I had to just ponder on that for a minute. And God was like, you're getting energy from, from clips, from these tidbit faith, right? These reels, they're great. And it's power in small moments. But you don't realize that that power comes from getting into the word, from having relationship, from having conversation with God. So you got to open up the word. You got to open yourself up to receive from him a word for you. Immediately, God started to show me that it is so important for us to individually get into his word. We got to come to church, get our preaching, get into fellowship based upon the word, get into conversation with people who are, who are having those same conversations, those same questions, right? Because we all struggle. We all struggle in, in what does this walk look like? How do we really become successful in, in walking and communicating with God, right? So fellowship is important. Coming to church and listening to the preachings is important. But God showed me that it's even more important to get deeper. We got to go deeper, we got to read the scriptures, read the before, read the after, read the full story, understand the character, understand the person that's speaking, understand what it is that they're saying, what trials did they go through, where is their faith at when things are going on? So as God is speaking to me about this, he reminded me of a story in one of my favorite, favorite books. And he showed me, he said, hey, I need you to remember something so that when the attacks come, you can combat them with my word. So he brings me to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. And we're going to read from 1 to about 14. And it reads, and this is in the NIV version. It reads, now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Mind you that Elijah is a prophet of the Lord and who he killed were the prophets of Baal, which is a false god. Okay, so Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me. Gods with a small g, just want to emphasize that. May the gods deal with me be it ever so severely, if by tomorrow, this time, I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. I need you to hold on to the fact that Elijah is a prophet of God. I need you to understand that he was able to kill all of those Baal prophets because the Lord made it so. I need you to understand that this is a man who spoke to God. He went to God. He conferred with God. And this woman, a mere human, sent a word. And he ran for his life. And when he came to Beersheba and Judah, he left his servant there. Next. 
while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush and sat down under it and prayed that he might die. That he might die. He said, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. I had to sit in that for a minute and I couldn't even imagine how a prophet of God could sit down and say, take my life, all because of a person sending a word. Then he laid down underneath the bush and he fell asleep. And all at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. And he ate and he drank and then he lied down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and he ate and he drank and strengthened by that food. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. When I read that, God showed me the devil only needs to give you a partial truth with a partial lie. If you don't know the word of God, if you can't combat it. When I read the 40 days and 40 nights, it reminded me of Jesus when he was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when the devil came and gave Jesus a partial truth and a partial lie, he immediately combated the partial lie with the truth and the word of God. He said to turn the stone into bread so that he could eat because he knew that Jesus was hungry. And he said, the word of God says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. But then that means that that's truth for us. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God comes through his word. It comes through opening up that book and God giving us revelation right there on who he is, what his love looks like, what a relationship looks like with him. It says, there he went into a cave and he spent the night and the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? And he replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, tore down your altars, and put your prophet to death with swords. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. And the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. It reminded me of Moses when he said, show me your glory. Show me your glory. And the Lord told him that he would cover him with his hand as his glory passed by. But here he's telling Elijah to go outside and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord was about to pass by. And then it says, then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and he went out and he stood on the mouth of the cave. And then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? <sighs> he replies, I have been very zealous for the Lord Almighty, the Lord God Almighty, and the Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophet to death with the sword. And I am the only one left and now they're trying to kill me too. This is a prophet that all it took was a partial lie to kind of just deter him and put him into a place where he really had to, in his own flesh, in his own understanding, which the word of God tells us to not lean on our own understanding, right? It took him to a place where he battled. And God showed me that the only way to combat these personal battles is to get into the word. 
is to understand that God is speaking in his word. God is talking to you directly. He's looking for the only way to combat these battles is to hold on to what God is saying, to trust and believe that when you're in your circumstance, you're battling a divorce, you're battling something with your children, you're losing a job, you have no home, you're losing your, whatever it is that is trying to consume you, whatever partial truth and partial lie is trying to consume you, because in your own power, it can't be done. But if you understand that you have Christ, it means that nothing is impossible, that you can tap into his word and find the peace that's going to be given to you by his word from him himself, from his spirit that's in you. It made me remember for a moment how debilitated I have become myself through fear or anxiety. But when God speaks, those fears and anxieties have to take a back seat. But the only way that those fears and anxieties can take a back seat is if you can combat them with his truth. If you can believe that when he tells you he's going to take you from glory to glory, it's going to happen. That if it doesn't look like it's glory to glory, then it's not from him. And hold still and be still and know that he is God and he's just working it out. That when you move and you move in alignment to what God is telling you to do, even when it doesn't look like anything is happening, the God that we serve is never stagnant. He is never stagnant. He is always working things out for his perfect timing so that he can be glorified. Your testimony is him being glorified. Why would he not? He chose this. This isn't something that we chose. This is something that he chose in the beginning. When Adam and Eve did what they did in the garden, God was the one who said, I'm going to come and I'm going to rectify this. And he, through the Bible, through every story, you see God trying to rectify a relationship with his people. It's no different. We serve a God who doesn't change. We serve a God whose love for his children is something that we can't even explain. We serve a God who says that his thoughts are above ours and his ways are above ours. It means when I can't understand what's going on, the only way I'm going to get peace is to lie myself in my strong tower. Find my refuge in him because he promises that that's what he is. Does he not? Yeah. Yeah. I learned at that moment that I couldn't base my faith. We can't base our faith on somebody else's intimacy with God. Those intimate moments have to be one on one. It means that we got to come and we got to sit down and we got to pray. Empty me out. I know nothing, Lord. I'm here and I need you to fill me. I'm feeling all of these things. Lay it down. God's not worried about you telling him that you're anxious and you're fearful. As a matter of fact, when he spoke to Joshua, he told Joshua, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. You read that scripture so many times in the book of Joshua. It's amazing. But it's a reminder that God has to continue to remind him. So why would he not continue to remind us? It's time for us to truly understand that this journey that we're walking is a war. It's a war, but it's not a war of flesh and blood. It tells us that in scripture. In Ephesians 6, 12, it says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So if we understand that, then we understand that we're definitely going to go through some things and this isn't a flesh and blood thing. So if it's not a flesh and blood thing, I can't fight it with my fleshy hands. But I can fight it with the spirit who lives inside of me. I can call upon the name of Jesus and claim victory before I even win the war. Because I don't have to understand that when I go to fight it, it's already won. If I make sure that the one that I'm holding on to is him. The 
problem is, (laughs) y'all, we cannot fight this war on a tidbit faith. This is a war that we have to fight getting to know God. And one of the biggest struggles that we have is, well, where do I start? Do I start in the book of Genesis? Do I start in the book? Do I go to Matthew? Do I go to, where do I go? Where do I start? You start by grabbing that book, opening it up, and asking God to reveal to you his truth. You go and you ask him to show you who you are. You go and you ask him, who is he? You go and you see what he's done already. You see in chapter 12 in Joshua that it is a list of wars that they won. But it wasn't by them. They won them because God made it happen. So if that's the case and we see time and time again that the wars that are being fought are being fought and won by him, then we got to understand that the war that we're going to fight is going to be won by him. Also understanding that we have to be accountable. We have to be accountable for this relationship. We have to be accountable for our actions. We can't just chalk it up to I'm saved and and I'm good. No, no, no. We got to understand that there's an accountability because if we go reading through the stories, you also see that correction. God is about correction. He is a God of order. He's always going to put things in order. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to pray to God for a million dollar mansion. And guess what? God is going to stretch me so that I can sustain that million dollar mansion. It means that I will have to what I'm praying for. I got to be ready that God is going to stretch me for me to hold on to the blessing that I'm asking him for. But as he's stretching me, we have a real enemy who comes to kill, steal and destroy. Clearly, it's his only purpose. But God says we have the victory. But it's in his word. But we see it with Elijah that a partial truth and a partial lie can really throw you off your track. And I would love for you to go back and I would love for you to just go and read in 1 Kings and see before chapter 19. Read in 18, read in 17. See the things that Elijah does because of God. And then go and read that chapter again. Read those scriptures again. See what it was that he sat there and he really told God, take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. That's not the truth. Because if you read further down, which I'm not going to give you all that. (laughs) If you read further down, you get to see what it is that God does with Elijah. You get to see what it is that even being afraid, you can tap into God's voice and move afraid. Move because God said so. Claim the victory because God told you. Believe that it is done because the spirit of the living God already told you that you were victorious. He called you by your name. He called you his child. He told you who you were. So why do we allow the enemy to come in with a partial truth and a partial lie and distract us and take us off course of what God has for us. I, I, I love the story in First Kings because it reminded me just for that moment, if this is a prophet, and this is not the first time that you're going to see it in the Bible, this is, this is a prophet of God. And if he's having these doubts and he has a moment of flesh, taking over his thoughts for him to come to God and say, just take my life. Then then we should understand that when the moment happens, have your moment for a second and take it back to God. Open up and let God speak. We have to remember if we go into Matthew in chapter four, when Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, if you go and you see, you see how the devil comes and he gives a partial truth, a partial lie. And then Jesus comes back with the full truth, a partial truth, a partial lie. And Jesus comes back with the full truth. Ultimately, you know what happens? The devil has to flee. He has to. So we can combat him with the truth that is in this book, understanding that this is an intimate relationship, understanding that it is imperative for us to open up this book. Then we win. God wins.
Tonight, I wanted to come here and just encourage you. I wanted to encourage you, family, to develop a relationship with the word of God so that we can stop losing the blessings because of a partial lie. It is not the truth. It is a partial lie. But if we keep basing our relationship with God off of tidbit faith, which means instant moments of power, you, you see a reel, it's, you know, 20 seconds, you feel the goosebumps go, you get really, really excited, but you don't know why that excitement came over you because you don't know what it is that that person does to have that moment of power. Every single one of us is able to have that moment of power and for it to be carried in our day to day. The renewal of our mind. He tells us to re renew our mind daily. There's a reason for that because the enemy is not going to stop. But we have a God who has already defeated him. So will we live victoriously here on earth? reaping the rewards of what it is to walk this journey with God or do we lose them to a tip of faith to a lie not even a whole lie because he actually gives you a partial truth we tend to forget that the enemy knows the word of God he knows it better than we do so it's time for us to open up our armor, open up our armory and fill it up with the word. Develop this one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. I am so blessed to be able to understand that a relationship with God is my greatest weapon. And I pray that tonight, the Lord will open that up for you too. So that is my word for tonight, family. I am praying for, for, for God to do something beautiful in the word that he has blessed me with tonight. If you feel led to sow a seed into tonight's word, to, to, to just ask God to open up his word to you, to open up this relationship with you, you're able to sow a seed by texting HOW NJ to 77977 or through our HOW app, which is absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't downloaded, please download it. It makes it really easy to give. Um, and I pray that this blesses you. So I'm going to close this out in prayer. Amen. So Father God, we bless you. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you, my Lord, that you are our greatest weapon, Father God, that your word, Lord Jesus, can bring us into an intimate relationship with you where we can combat the lies of the enemy, Father God, and run after everything that you have given us. Thank you, Jesus, for reminding us that we are flesh and we are human. And Father God, if Elijah had a moment of weakness, Lord, Father. Forgive us, my Lord, for when we do. But Father God, help us to step back up into position by getting into your word, my Lord, understanding this relationship and continuing to go afraid, Father God, and into what it is that you have for us. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that anyone who is battling with procrastination or, or fear of lacking understanding in the word, my Lord, that you, my Lord, may give them an understanding, that you may give them the wisdom that they seek for lord father as they search in your word father god for your word says to seek you with our whole heart father god and that we would find you so lord i am praying that your children will seek you that they will seek you in your word that they will seek you father god and that you my lord will reveal yourself to them i pray my lord that you continue to be our strong tower that we continue to claim you as so, that we continue to find refuge and strength, peace, Father God, in you. 
We bless you, Lord, and we worship you. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Good night, family.